Have you ever pondered how the bustling metropolis of New York City began its journey? It all started with the Dutch settlement of New Amsterdam. In the early 17th century, the Dutch West India Company, an enterprise focused on the fur trade, set its sights on a new frontier. Their attention was drawn to a strategic southern tip of a landmass, an island that would later be known as Manhattan. In the year 1625, they established a small fur trading post there, laying the foundations for New Amsterdam. But the Dutch didn't just stumble upon this land. No, it was already home to the Lenape Native Americans. This brings us to an intriguing character in our story, Peter Minuit. Serving as the director of the Dutch West India Company in 1626, Minuit is famously known for a transaction that would echo through the annals of history. He purchased Manhattan Island from the Lenape Native Americans. The price? Trade goods worth 60 guilders, a sum often valued, albeit inaccurately in the 19th century, as 24 US dollars. You might be wondering why would the Dutch West India Company go to such lengths for a piece of land? The answer lies in the lucrative fur trade. This island, with its rivers teeming with beavers, presented an opportunity too good to pass up. The Dutch West India Company hoped to establish a base for its fur trade operations, and New Amsterdam was the perfect candidate. And so, the Dutch roots took hold. Streets were laid, buildings were erected, and the population grew. This small trading post gradually transformed into a bustling settlement. It was the birth of a city, a city that would one day become the heart of a nation, a city we now know as New York. Thus, the foundations of New York City were laid, not by English settlers, but by the Dutch. From a small fur trading post, New Amsterdam grew into a thriving settlement. This transformation was no small feat. The settlement's growth was a testament to the tenacity of its inhabitants and the shrewd leadership of its governing body, the Dutch West India Company. In the early years, the settlement was a modest outpost, a dot on the vast landscape of the New World. But under the determined leadership of Peter Stuyvesant, who became the last Dutch director general of the colony in 1647, New Amsterdam began to flourish. Stuyvesant, known for his strong leadership and tireless efforts to strengthen the colony, was instrumental in steering the settlement towards its future as a city. 1653 was a watershed year for New Amsterdam. It was in this year that the settlement was incorporated as a city. This was a significant milestone marking the transformation of a small trading post into a bustling urban center. The city's incorporation signified its growth and maturity and its strategic importance to the Dutch colonial enterprise. But what was the engine driving this growth? Trade and agriculture were the lifeblood of New Amsterdam's economy. The city's strategic location at the southern tip of Manhattan Island made it a hub for the Dutch West India Company's fur trade operations in the North River, now known as the Hudson River. This trade brought wealth and prosperity to the city, attracting settlers and fueling its growth. Agriculture, too, played a crucial role in the city's development. The fertile lands surrounding the city were cultivated for crops, providing sustenance for the city's inhabitants and produce for trade. The combination of trade and agriculture created a robust and dynamic economy, propelling New Amsterdam's growth and development. This growth and development of New Amsterdam from a small trading post to a thriving city was a remarkable journey. It was a journey that was shaped by visionary leadership, strategic location, and a flourishing economy. This growth and development would lay the groundwork for the city we know today. The Dutch settlers didn't exist in a vacuum. They interacted with the Native Americans who lived in the region. When the Dutch first arrived in the early 17th century, they established a relationship with the Native Americans, particularly the Lenape people, who were the original inhabitants of Manhattan. The Dutch, led by Peter Minuit, negotiated a deal with the Lenape, purchasing the island of Manhattan for trade goods worth 60 guilders. This transaction, often inaccurately valued as 24 US dollars in the 19th century, marked the beginning of a relationship defined by exchange and diplomacy. In these early years, the Dutch and the Lenape maintained a peaceful coexistence, marked by mutual respect and trade. The Dutch were interested in the fur trade, and the Lenape, with their knowledge of the local fauna, were invaluable partners. 
This harmony, however, was not destined to last. As the Dutch settlement grew, so did their demands for land and resources. This increasing pressure led to mounting tensions between the Dutch and the Native Americans. The settlers' encroachment on Native American lands led to conflicts, disrupting the initial peace. One notable incident was the Peach Tree War of 1655, when a dispute over a stolen peach escalated into a violent conflict, resulting in the death of several Dutch settlers and a subsequent retaliation against Native American communities. This event marked a turning point in the Dutch-Native American relations, highlighting the growing tensions and the fragile nature of their coexistence. Such conflicts were not isolated to New Amsterdam. Similar patterns were seen across the New World as European settlers expanded their territories, often at the expense of Native American communities. In the grand scheme of history, these early interactions between the Dutch settlers and Native Americans were significant. They were reflective of the broader narrative of colonization, characterized by initial cooperation, escalating tensions, and eventual conflict. These early interactions set a precedent for the future relationship between European settlers and Native Americans. The Dutch rule of New Amsterdam didn't last forever. In 1664, a new power took control. As the winds of change blew across the Atlantic, they brought with them the sails of English ships. Their destination? New Amsterdam. Their mission? To claim this prosperous Dutch outpost for England. The English saw the strategic and economic potential of the thriving Dutch settlement, and they wanted it for themselves. Peter Stuyvesant, the last Dutch director general of the colony, was faced with a daunting decision. Known for his strong leadership, Stuyvesant initially wanted to resist the English forces. His fiery spirit and dedication to the Dutch West India Company made him reluctant to surrender without a fight. But as he weighed the odds, Stuyvesant saw the reality of the situation. The English forces were formidable, their intent clear. Stuyvesant realized that resistance could lead to unnecessary bloodshed and destruction. The colony he had worked so hard to strengthen could be decimated. So, with a heavy heart, he chose peace over conflict. Stuyvesant surrendered New Amsterdam to the English without a fight. His decision marked the end of Dutch rule, but it also ensured the survival of the settlement he'd helped to build. With the Dutch flag lowered and the English flag raised, New Amsterdam underwent another significant change. The settlement was renamed New York in honor of the Duke of York, the brother of King Charles II of England. The name change signified a new era for the former Dutch colony. But beneath this new English identity, the heart of New Amsterdam continued to beat. The Dutch era of New York City had come to an end, but the impact of Dutch rule was far from over. The seeds of tolerance, trade, and community planted by the Dutch would continue to grow, shaping the character of the future city and nation. And so, the Dutch era of New York City came to an end, but its legacy lived on. Though the Dutch rule was over, the influence of New Amsterdam persisted. Even today, as we navigate the bustling streets of New York City, we are walking through the echoes of a Dutch past. The blueprint of this global city, particularly in Lower Manhattan, follows the colonial layout of New Amsterdam. The street plan, with its narrow winding lanes and alleys, is a constant reminder of the city's Dutch roots. New York's Dutch influence isn't just traced in its cartography, but also etched in its place names. Have you ever wondered about the origins of the names Brooklyn, Harlem, or the Bronx? Well, they're all Dutch. Brooklyn is derived from Brooklyn, Harlem from Harlem, and the Bronx from Bronx River. These names spoken millions of times each day are a living testament to the city's early Dutch settlers. But the legacy of New Amsterdam extends beyond maps and monikers. The Dutch policies of religious tolerance and free trade, which were quite radical for the 17th century, had a profound impact on the future city and nation. The Dutch belief in freedom of religion allowed for a diverse array of beliefs and practices. This policy of tolerance drew people from different backgrounds, creating a vibrant and diverse population that has come to define the essence of New York City. Equally transformative was the Dutch emphasis on free trade. New Amsterdam was a trading post first and foremost, built by the Dutch West India Company to harness the wealth of the New World. This commercial spirit, this DNA of enterprise, is deeply woven into the fabric of New York City, a town synonymous with global commerce. 
New Amsterdam may be a footnote in history, but its impact on New York City and the United States is undeniable. Its legacy etched in the city's streets, echoed in its place names and embodied in its embrace of diversity and commerce, continues to shape the character and destiny of America's most iconic city.